people in Sydney. It's my first time in Australia. Um, I flew about 40 hours in the last week, so I'm a little bit, uh, you know, <laughs> disorganized. Um, one thing I wanted to point out was that, you know, I've been to a lot of different conferences and I've spoken at different events, and this one is the most male dominated meetup I've ever been to. So, congratulations. Um, so, let me tell you a little bit about uh, why we started Kronos. So, I'm one of the founding partners. My other founding partner went to university with me at Carnegie Mellon uh, 15 years ago. It's hard to say those words out of my mouth. Uh, <laughs> it's been a long time. Um, we studied, I studied finance. My partner studied uh, computer engineering and finance. Um, and back in like 07, 08, when everyone was losing their shirts in the traditional markets, my founding partner, Mark, was making a killing at Citadel. Their group made a billion dollars uh, in 07 and another billion dollars in 08. I think they had about 40 people in the group. And not sure how much money they utilized, but it was much less than a billion dollars. So the return was very, very high on capital. Um, at the same time, my parents were losing and a lot of other people were losing in the space. So I always wanted to um, find a way to open up those really good strategies that were really only for the elite within Citadel and open it up to everybody, or as many people as we can. <coughs> so the strategies that Mark worked on at Citadel was not even open to Citadel's clients. They were only open to Citadel's internal senior management. Um, <coughs> so if you, if you look at you know, how crypto moves, it is much more volatile than traditional markets, right? Stocks, bonds, whatever, globally, right? Um, this is one reason why a lot of interest has gone out of the space, right? There was a, there's a lot of, there was a lot of excitement last year um, and, and the year leading up to that uh, for investing into ICOs, for investing into Ether and Bitcoin, but <coughs> when people try to leave the space and realize that the utility of many of the tokens that they bought weren't actually there, and those tokens were just sitting in wallets, people started to sell. And Ether dropped like, you know, 22% within a matter of hours. This would be completely unimaginable uh, in the stock market, right? If an index were to drop 22% in four hours. So it's a very immature market. There's a lot of manipulation. And we feel like now is the right time to introduce a more professionally built strategy uh, for and open it up to as many people as possible. <coughs> so here are some of the reasons why the market has become colder, right? Uh, like I said, retail investors have gotten killed as well as many professional guys, right? Because the door going into ICOs is very wide. You can in invest millions and millions into a project with not without any issue. But when you try to sell in the secondary markets, that's when the issue is, right? There's no liquidity. When you try to sell $100,000, $200,000, you can bring it down quite dramatically. Again, here's the, you know, here's the trend kind of um, from a couple years ago. Started with no ICOs all the way until the maximum in late uh, 2017, and we've gone back basically 24 months, right? So there's a lot of projects still, but each project is raising very, very little now. That's Mark. So what we're doing is uh, we're trying to build a asset management ecosystem as well as provide market making through our token, right? And we have a utility token that gives access to these services and funds, and each fund will have a security token attached to it. So that does a couple of things, right? Right now, people are used to trading stocks and trading uh, you know, tokens on, on the exchanges. But those tokens aren't backed by anything, right? So for us, those tokens will be backed by the assets of the fund, and the tokens could trade at a huge premium or a discount to the net asset value in the funds, right? So say we have a high frequency strategy or some other strategy, and the net asset value goes up 10%. That token attached to that strategy could go up 100%, 200%, or down, right? It, it's based on the supply and demand of the market. 
So what we've done is we've created a ecosystem or marketplace for the trading of tokens backed by f hedge fund strategies. So that's Mark. He, you know, is a little bit about his background. Uh, he worked at Citadel, Knight Capital Group, uh, and Radix. So he's been around the block 11 years in high-frequency alpha-based market making. Um, Eugene was his partner at Citadel, and he later became an ex, uh, a PM at Tower Research, and now he works at Twitter. Kevin manages $500 million right now, but he's entering crypto through our platform. Um, and he actually contributed the CTA strategy that we'll see right here. Uh, if, if one message is to be clear, is that there are many strategies that can outperform the market. So I don't care if you like Bitcoin or Ether or some other coin, right? Just buy and hold is probably not the best idea, um, especially if you have a tendency to sell when the market is volatile and then buy when people are really bullish. So that is very counterintuitive to human nature. Um, and for someone to really learn how to trade, it's going to take many, many years uh, without guarantee of success. So this kind of a strategy tries to predict uh, early, early formations of trend and also predicts kind of uh, reversion to the mean type moves. Um, and, and you can see that the red line is Bitcoin and the blue line is our strategy. So when the trend is too strong, too fast for Bitcoin, we tend to underperform, like what happened in 2013 and 2017. But any time that there's a drawdown in Bitcoin, that is when the strategy really shines. Because it doesn't care if it goes long or short. It has no emotional uh, attachment to being long or short. It's only making judgment calls on if it should be long, if it should be short, and for how much time, and how aggressively it should do that. So these are uh, kind of more details on this kind of a strategy. So it's up 127% this year. Maximum drawdown is kind of on every uh, dip, kind of what is the maximum distance between the top and the bottom, right? <coughs> so then you can calculate these ratios, like comma ratios. Basically, if you risk a dollar, you get $11 in return. So. I mean, our, our values is just that, you know, how do you really attract the best traders onto a platform, right? You need to build an ecosystem, you need to build an infrastructure to be as good as Citadel. Because what it takes to be successful today in trading is not going to be the same one year later or two years later, right? There's going to be more sophistication, there's going to be more uh, talented people coming into the space. So what, when you're building this uh, ecosystem, you need to have that in mind, right? That's why we've hired the best people in the space. Um, as you can see, we have people in, from the physics background or engineering background, lead engineer at Yahoo, and Mark is leading these guys on how to build such a system. <coughs> these are some of the funds that back us, um, and they are going to be one of our first users of the funds, right? So it's a very easy kind of idea. You back the ICO, right, by buying the utility token, and then there's going to be a ratio on how much you can put into the funds later on. So maybe a dollar worth of our cron token, you can buy six dollars worth of this you know, CTA strategy, right? Um. <coughs> oh, I guess I should talk about like why why the token would be. Um, uh, how the token would work throughout the ecosystem, but it's it might be a little bit uh, complicated, so you can ask me this question directly. Um, but b basically, we'll take most of the profits that we generate, and we will try to repurchase opportunistic opportunistically the utility token and stake it into a collateral fund instead of burning. This fund will then be used to take uh, BTC or Ether loans against, and then we'll use that to subsidize our market-making fund. So everything we do, it's kind of like a circular thing where it kind of supports the utility token price. We want stability, right? Because people are using this to access the funds. And if our utility token is you know, moving in a crazy manner, then people don't want to hold that to invest in anything. 
So that's kind of the idea. Um, we're trying to launch four funds this year, high frequency, CTA, discretionary, and an option strategy, uh, and per perhaps a index fund as well. Um, and hopefully we'll find a way to uh, make it available to as many people as possible. And uh, we're based in Taipei, that's, that's our office. So thank you. Awesome, big round of applause, big round of applause for Jack. We'll pull Jack straight back on for Q&A, unless there's any burning quick questions now that we want to start to ask. Hang on, stand by. What does CTA stand for? It's basically uh, like a systemized, uh, s it's, it's like a quantitative way to look at how things move, right? And it kind of tries to do trend following, right? It's like a technical analysis, right? Yeah. Yes. Sure. Question over he here with the microphone. We need to use the mic because we're filming this live. Uh, firstly, thanks for flying down. That was very impressive. In terms of um, any rev share from the funds you've chose to invest in, will the distribution of the performance be paid back in the utility token or some other currency or... Bitcoin or what? So for the CTA strategy, that's uh, USDT based, uh, and it will be paid back by USDT. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's good. Thank you. Awesome. Another question over here, and then we're going to get Jack back for some Q&A, so we might just roll with this one. Hey, Jack, man, um, why do you need the Kronos token? Why don't you just use US dollars? Well, U.S. dollars would lock out a lot of people from the ecosystem. It's difficult to get U.S. dollars if you're in uh, Venezuela, if you're in some other country that has this uh, kind of inefficient uh, gateway to USD. So that's why we use crypto. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much. Big round of applause. Big round of applause for Jack. <laughs>